This is Rich with uh, WorkshopAddict.com and this is tutorial number four for uh, SketchUp. I'm using 2013 here but this will also apply to uh, previous versions. So far we've been through the toolbar items uh, from the select tool all the way up to the freehand tool and uh, the next tool over is going to be uh, move and we'll uh, we'll start with that. Um, let's draw something on the screen and we're going to draw a, uh, a 2 before. So we know that a 2 before dimension is uh, um, 1.5 comma 3.5 so we got one and a half times 3.5 we're gonna select that make it a group and pull it push pull tool pulls it I'm gonna type in 96 so now we have a uh, 2 by 4 that's 96 inches long now the move tool when we select something we can hit M for move which is what I normally do or click the toolbar item and select what we want to move and we're going to start to move it along this plane. We can start moving it in the direction we want. really doesn't matter which axis we're on. We could go back this way. We could go up. You know, of course you want to stay on your axis. Pick the one that you want to move on. We're, we're going to come across this direction. You'll notice my length down on the bottom shows 45. That means I've moved 45 inches off my line but I only wanted to go 16 inches so I'm going to just type 16 and enter and we've moved at 16 if we wanted to move at another 16 I start moving that way again type 16 and we've moved at 16 say I want to go back to my whoops I'm on rotate here I want to go back to my origin I start moving back this direction type 32 we should be back where we started now the move key doubles as a copy key. All you have to do when you start the move is hit the control key and it toggles back and forth. If you wanted to go from copy back to move you just hit it again. Uh, so we're going to start to move across here and if I hit the control key you'll notice it changed to copy. So I'm coming across here and I start going the direction I want and I type 16 and I now have my stud on 16 inch centers. If I wanted 10 more of those I would just hit the star key which is shift 8 and then the number of copies I'd want. In my case um, I want 10. So if you take a look down there at the length it says star 10 which means 10 copies. So I hit enter and it copied across the the screen and we have we have uh, 10 copies. So that uh, that worked out well. The next uh, item, push-pull, we've already talked about that uh, in all the uh, tutorials. We can uh, pull any uh, 2D object into a 3D object by pushing or pulling, assuming it's a good object to start with. And uh, we can also lengthen or shorten things with it. Uh, for instance, if I wanted to lengthen this stud 24 inches, or let's say shorten it 24 inches. I want to edit that stud, so I double click it so I get my box around it. Um, click this tool or hit P for push pull, and I go in and I'm going to click the end of my stud here and start moving the direction I want and just type 24 and we just shorten that stud by 24. Now that also works for anything else. We're still in the edit mode. If I wanted to make uh, this 2x4 into a 2x6, push-pull, I start on this side, a 2x4 or a 2x6 is um, 2 inches bigger than a 2x4, so I just start pulling and I hit 2 and I now have a inch and a half by a 5.5 inch board which would be be a 2 before. So push-pull tool uh, brings things into 3D, you know, by pulling that object into a three-dimensional shape, as well as lengthening and shortening, and and uh, uh, it's something you will uh, use all the time in 
in uh, SketchUp 3D. It's one of the uh, primary tools. The next tool, I'm going to zoom in here, is the Rotate tool. We click that, and as we've talked about before, we have we have uh, different axis. Let me move this stud back so we can see it a little better. When we're on Rotate, we have three different axes. Right here, we're, we're rotating on our blue axis. This is our green axis, and this is our red axis. So if we wanted to rotate that stud on the blue axis, we would get it so, it, uh, so the blue is showing, and then click the point we want to rotate on, and then, then start our rotate process. Now the thing that is tough, when you get down the corner area, we've got three different axes in a close proximity. So you'll notice it's jumping around quite a bit as we move around between those different planes. So what you do is you just find the axis you want to rotate it on. This protractor looking thing tells you what plane that's going to rotate on. And you hold down the shift key. And as long as that shift key is held down, it will not switch uh, axis. I've got it held down and it's stuck on the blue. I'll let off here and if I went up here on the red, held down on the shift, no matter what I do, it's locked where it's going to rotate on that on that uh, red axis. We want to rotate it on the blue axis. So I'm going to hold down the shift, I'm going to come in here and I want to I want to click on this this corner that's what we're going to rotate. Once I start my click, I can let off. Then it, then what it's asking you for is a reference point. And uh, we really don't need that here, but in a minute I'm going to show you how that, how that works. We're just going to rotate this stud so it's at a 45. So we can click down anywhere out here to start. And then when we move, see we're rotating on that point. And if you look at our angle down at the bottom, it's showing, see we're at 45 there, 50. I normally just get it going the direction I want, type 45. We now have a stud that's rota uh, rotated at a 45 uh, degree angle. Let's rotate that thing at a something that's odd. Um, going to hold down my shift key, get it on the blue plane, click there. I'm just going to go over here and do something weird. I didn't even pay attention to uh, to what that was. So I don't know what that angle is. So if I wanted to bring, I'm going to move this, stu this uh, stud here over and uh, connect those corners. If I wanted to rotate, I'm looking at the bottom now, I wanted to rotate this stud around so it matched the other stud. I would have no idea um, how how to or what to rotate that to because I don't know what it is. Now I could use our protractor tool, which I'll show you later, and I could measure that. But based on the precision of the drawing, you know what we're rounding off to, it'd probably rotate around close, but it wouldn't be perfect. Um, you know, depending on what we had the precision of the drawing set up and if using snaps, so on and so forth, it just wouldn't be perfect. So we're going to rotate this, but we're going to do it perfect. So we're going we're gonna to go to our rotate tool and we once again, we don't want to rotate on, on the red plane or the green plane. We want to rotate on that blue plane at the bottom. Um, I didn't have to hit the shift key there. It, uh, since we're looking at it kind of straight on from the bottom, it's figured that out. But you can do that. Get on the blue plane. Come over to the corner. This is the corner we're going to rotate it on. And it's asking us for our reference point, which uh, we want it something on this edge because we're bringing this edge around to this and uh, we can do it just on the edge of the group. It gives us an indication that that's the edge. Normally, I'd, I'll just go to the end point because that's easiest. So I clicked on the end point there, and you'll notice we are now rotating from that reference point. And if I come down here and click on 
this edge, except except I'm not uh, I didn't start rotating on the right spot. Let's go back to rotate again. Rotate. I'm gonna set my reference point here. There we did. I didn't click in the right spot showing you the last time. So if I come down here I can pick this edge or once again easiest to pick the end point. Click that. We have now rotated that stud perfectly. There is no error at all because of precision or or uh, snap units or anything like that. So anyhow, that's uh, that's how the rotate tool works. The uh, we could do the same thing here if we wanted to put these studs back. Let's do both of them. Put these studs back on this origin again, uh, or anything. Let's uh, matter of fact, we're not always working on the origin unless you change the origin every time you draw something. I mean, that's not going to be the case. Let's move these things somewhere off uh, off that origin. Say we got a uh, uh, a wall here, and we wanted to rotate this stud back so it's lined up with the rest of this wall. What I would do here is I would draw a guide. I just pull out and back. You know, as I had mentioned before, if you pull your tape measure tool out on a plane and click, it will create a guide. Make sure you stay on your axis, um, whatever distance you pulled it out. But if you um, if you pull a guide out and go back, it will create a, a guide uh, right along that uh, that particular entity. So if we go down here now, we've got our two two befores. Our corner is on that guide. We can select those, go to rotate. Once again, we want to be on that blue plane. You can hold down the shift key to guarantee that. And we're going to do it on this corner. So we come up here and we select this corner as our reference and we come down here and we click on the line. Now it probably wouldn't have been necessary to do that in this case because let's get rid of the guide. If we had uh, went to our rotate tool, got on the blue plane, clicked our reference point up here, we could have come up here and just clicked that and, and known. But depending on what you're working with, you may not know where you're uh, going to rotate to, so that uh, that works uh, really well. All right, next tool is Follow Me tool. Um, I probably should do a complete tutorial on this uh, because it's uh, kind of quirky sometimes and can be complex. We're going to draw a rectangle. And we're going to make it 36 comma 36. So we've got a square here, 36 inches square. We're going to make it a group, and we're going to pull it three-quarter thick, like it's plywood. So we got a three-quarter by 36 by 36 um, group down here. If we wanted to put a, a profile, like a beveled piece or a routed piece or something um, around the edge of this, we could, uh, we could do so using the... Uh, follow me tool. Um, a lot of times I'll create guides just to um, so I know where I'm I'm going with my profile. Let's say I'm going to do something like start off with an arc. Whoops, didn't quite click in the right spot here. And I'm going to come down and click and I want the same thing down here, except now we'll do it like that. And then I'm going to use my line tool and come up here and out. Let's use that uh, arc again. And do that and it completed so we know it's on the same plane so we got this wild profile over here 
uh, follow me doesn't follow um, things as well as I would like um, sometimes so normally what I'll do just to be safe is I'll go in here make sure I'm on this corner and I'm gonna use the line tool and I'm gonna come down here click to this endpoint make sure you get the top and you're not dropping down three-quarters of an inch to the bottom or that's gonna cause you all kinds of grief so I've got just drew a line around that that three-quarter sheet that we're working with we can delete those guides so we don't have to look at them anymore delete guides gets rid of all our guides now we're gonna go to the uh, follow me tool and often the first time you click it will automatically try to jump to the first point um, I need to highlight that because I was in edit mode the uh, it will try to jump to the first point it didn't do it there but so that's good sometimes you gotta back up if it tries to jump to that first corner so we're gonna back up down here and we're telling it to follow me so it's basically following around that line we drew so we're gonna go down here and around the corner and we're just gonna continue to rotate around here going to go down here and you want to be real careful when you get to the very end and the reason is you have the option of stopping right at the end continuing it as if it was you know routed uh, or a 45 uh, or to try to go up or down and I'm going to kind of move down here and zoom a little in a little bit and hopefully you can see what I'm talking about uh, I've seen it do 360s before and get kind of funky and you can just back up and you'll you'll tell by looking at it when it's right but we get down here see how it's doing something weird there or it's trying to turn up or we can stop short or you know it just be real careful with it but if you get down here see doing weird stuff so we gotta back up and we come down here click we we now have that that profile that we created so that's how you would do you know a crown molding or if you were routing something in a woodworking pro project or machining it on a mill that's how we create a profile this uh, profile works the same way you can follow circles with it so if we were making a turned lathe we could draw a 2d profile of the shape of that leg we'd want to draw and at the very top of it we'd create a circle and we would tell it to follow that circle so it would basically wrap around that circle and create a, a uh, turned piece so that's uh, that's how the uh, follow me tool works uh, very powerful you can create some uh, complex shapes with it but a little bit quirky or at least in my experience or I will say my limited experience with it it uh, just doesn't always work as predicted so you gotta kinda take it slow and uh, and be careful with it so that's the end of this tutorial we'll come back on the uh, uh, next one here and uh, pick up the uh, pick up the scale tool and and move on through the uh, rest of the tools